Hello guys, good afternoon. Um, while I'm doing this video in view of what happened on Saturday, I, I reckon that the network was very bad. And for most of the recording that I did, happens to be in bits and pieces. So I went through with you with solving example one, okay? Which arguably some were still confused in class. Therefore, what I'm going to do with this video is to go through the second example with you to aid your learning as far as the application of the Gulf Jordan method is concerned when we have a problem with systems of linear equation and we want to use matrix to solve them. So as we've gone through example one already, let's look at example two, okay? Given that equation one constitute 20x1 plus 15x2 plus 10x3 equals to 400. And equation two is also shown as such. And equation three is also shown. Now, what we said about the gauss jordan application is first of all, we need to convert or transform the systems of linear equations we have here into matrix form. And if you remember, I intimated that you have to look at in simple form, look at how to group the coefficients of the decision variable in one matrix, then put all the decision variables in another matrix. Then let's say the resources, okay, that is the value of the total figure you have if you should do a sum product of the equation, i.e. we are looking at the 400, the 40, and five, you also put them into in one word matrix. Therefore, by way of doing all this, by transformation, I have this as a matrix here, 20, 15, 10. Remember we said row by row, then one, two, one, then zero, zero, one. So we'll name this as matrix A. Then for all the decision variables, we we'll name it as well as matrix X. And that for the resources, we name it as what? Matrix B. Now we are to solve for X1, X2, and X3. And we are saying that we want to apply the gauss jordan method through the form of what matrix. I remember I said that all the gauss jordan method seeks to do is to apply what we call the elementary row operation, the arrow. Means that for me to get the value for x1, x2, x3, I have to systematically convert matrix A into an identity matrix. Okay, by identity means that the corresponding values for matrix A, be it identity matrix, must be a square matrix, which I re-emphasize. So our quest is to convert the whole of these elements in this matrix into 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Once I do that, I can say that as long as I do my iteration on the left side of the whole augmented matrix, the right hand side must also be affected. So whatever I do in row one here must also affect the resource value, what I have here as the row values here. Well, so like I said, the arrow allows us to do scalar multiplication. We can pick a non-zero scalar, multiply it through any given row. At the same time, we can interchange rows. Or we can go further to say that 
we can subtract row from another row, bearing in mind the row we want to see the changes in. So to solve this problem, look at this critically here. Row three has zero, zero, one, and that is what we want to achieve. So technically there is nothing to do for row what, three. Our concentration therefore should be on row one and row two. And by iteration, you can start either from row one or you come to row two or whichever one you want to uh, solve first. So let's go through this. Let me get my whiteboard. Um, whiteboard, okay, good. So given that we have 20, 15, and 10. Then we have 1, 2, 1, 40. This is 400, 0, 0, 1, and this is 5. I have augmented the matrix. So as I said, we can now start working on either row 1 or row 2 depending on what you want to do, okay? Somebody will say, okay, let's do row interchange. Someone will say, okay, let's do division of matrix or let's add a matrix, a row to another row, okay? So I'm going to briefly go through this with you step by step, okay? So what I see, I see huge values in row one, okay? And a possible scalar that can, that is divisible by all of them is five. So on row one, I will say that let's divide row one by scalar five. What do we have? We have four, three, two, 80. Okay, row two remains the same, row three remains the same. Good. Next, what can we do? Somebody will say, okay, let's further do uh, or let's divide a scalar again by that or not. But what I can see from here, we can, because we're looking to see that the, row, the first row should be one, zero, zero, one, sorry, one, zero, zero. We can interchange row one and row two, okay? So if I said interchange row one, row two, row one now becomes one, two, one, 40, row two become four, three, two, 40, row three is still the same, and five, good. So let's continue. From here, I can further say that, okay, let's look at, um, if I look at row two, can I do something to row two? Or can I further go on to do row three okay so let's say that we agree that work on row two okay and we are saying that if we are working on row two let's say that row two minus row what one let's see what we have row two minus row one row one is still one two one this is uh this will be, sorry, this is supposed to be 18 or 40. So I have your 40. So four minus one is what? Three, good. Three minus two is one. Two minus one is one. 18 minus 40 is 40. This is still zero, zero, one, respectively, five, good. What should we do again? Okay, so we can still look at maybe row two again, and let's see, because we want this guy to be zero, one, zero, okay? And from what I have here, I can still say, let's work on row two. Okay, so one, two, one for 40, all right? So we are saying, let's say, we are looking at row, Row two minus row three. Let's see what we'll have. Three minus zero is zero. One minus zero is zero. 
is one, sorry, one minus one is zero. 40, those will give you 35, zero, zero, one, and five, okay? What can we do again? We can look at row one, let's see. So we'll say row one, we can look at row one minus row three, let's see. So one minus zero is one, two minus zero is two, one minus one is zero, 40 minus five is 35. This will still be three, one, uh, three, one, zero. Okay, 35, zero, zero, one, and five. This is supposed to be zero. Okay, now the next thing to do from here, we can again look at working on row, mm, let's see row two, okay? Let's go to row two, let me straight line here. Row two, we can say that let's look at three times row one minus row two, okay? Row one is one, two, zero. This is 35. Three times one is three, three minus three here, that will be zero. Three times two is six, six minus one is five. Three times zero is zero, zero minus zero is zero. Three times, three times 75 minus 35 should give you 70. Then this is the zero, zero, one, and five. From here, we can now simplify it to say that, okay, let's look at row two again. So we'll say that row two divided by five. Okay, so we should have what? One, two, zero, 35. Zero divided by five is zero. Five divided by five is one. Zero, this is also zero. And this should give you 14. Okay, good. This is still zero, zero, one, and five. So you can see that we've been able to transform row two to be zero, one, zero. So we are left with row one. Okay, what should we do row one? We can just say that, okay, so row one minus two, row two. Yes, let's see. So, so we have here, Two times zero is zero, one minus zero is one. Two times one is two, two minus two is zero. Two times zero is zero, zero minus zero is zero. Okay, two times uh, 14. So 35 minus um, uh, 28, that should give you seven. Okay, then this will still be zero, one, zero, 14. Then we have zero, zero, one, and five. Simple. So we can now say that from our solution, okay, now that we've been able to convert matrix A to an identity matrix, remember we said that anytime you multiply a matrix by any given identity matrix, you get the matrix itself. And remember that the whole equation was that we were having 20, okay, let me recopy just for emphasis, 20, 15, 10, X1, X2, X3. This is one, two, one. You have your zero, zero, one. This is this, you have these guys too here. All equals to what? 440 and five, okay? This is what you have. So now this guy is now transformed to one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, okay? Multiplying X1, X2, X1, X2, X3, okay? So we will say that, it's just to say that identity matrix times X equal to X. Therefore, 
from what we have here, x1 corresponds to what? The value 7, x2 equals to 14, x3 equals to 5. So that is what we have done using the gauss jordan method by way of uh, solving for identity matrix to solve for the decision variable.